Hola, pessoal! Bem-vindos a mais um episódio de Disney Real to Real. Um migulo profundo, profundo, profundo no canone animado da Disney. Eu sou Wyatt e nesta semana faremos uma viagem à terra do romance, do luar e dos homens bonitos. Bahia. That was honestly pretty good, I dare say. Oh, thank you! Thank you so much! <laughs> As someone who does not speak Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Ray. Um, yeah, I think I think that was pretty good. Oh my god, thank you! <laughs> Day is made. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh... As, as Ray said, she's back here again, and uh, today we're going to begin our trek through Disney's filmic outreach to Latin America during World War II, beginning with sequences three and four from 1944's The Three Caballeros. Uh, well, it's good to be back. It's yeah. good to be back. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew I couldn't pass on you when talking about this movie at any point, so it's like... <laughs> And especially with it being summertime, you know, feeling the vibes, feeling the Bahia energy. Exactly. Yeah. But before we get into that fabulosity, I, has, I have to ask, what are your memories? I'm going to abandon the prior association thing because it sounds like an FBI <laughs> investigation. But uh, what are your memories of the Three Caballeros? My memories of the Three Caballeros. Um, well, I mean... I watched it like many years ago, like <laughs> probably like back in the time before, like I really knew a lot about Disney. Like I liked Disney movies, but I didn't like know a ton about Disney. Um, so I was probably, probably pretty young. Um, and I think, I think I first watched it because my, my dad found like a uh, like a combo like DVD of Three Caballeros and Saludos Amigos. <laughs> uh huh. I and... have the same one in my notes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My dad found that, um, and we watched it. And I remember just immediately attaching to the Three Caballeros <laughs> as a concept. <laughs> <laughs> And then specifically, specifically the birds. <laughs> we love these birds. I love, I love these gay birds. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I th wait, no, I thought we decided they were all bi kings. True. Right. Sorry. <laughs> no bi erasure in here. <laughs> I love these bi birds. <laughs> because they do all thirst over women. However, they are also very into men. <laughs> yeah. Even Donald gets excited when the two Alondros, they get in that cockfight. Yeah, like, yeah. It, like it's he's a into whole it. thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, for me, I remember there being this, like, VHS tape that my mother must have checked out from our local library when I was, like, three or four. <laughs> uh, I don't remember anything other than those gauchos and their horses laughing like loons at that child <laughs> during the flying gauchito sequence. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> I was like, they have such big teeth. And at that time, I was not cool with animated characters having really big pronounced teeth. <laughs> Pinocchio. That's such, um, a, that's such a specific thing. <laughs> I know. I know. And it's like a visceral memory that I have. And I'm like, of all things. Those um, men with big teeth. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I also remember the Bahia song. With the camera panning through those beautiful static paintings, which we oh. will devote so much time to. <laughs> so much time. Yeah. But uh, nothing else really stands out until... Actually, no. Hold on. Uh, I remember there being this like sing-along VHS tape that had the Three Caballeros song on it. And oh. <laughs> I remember finding it very strange, but not in like a funny kind of way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as most people felt about the rest of this movie, but we'll get into that later. But uh, nothing else really stands out until 2008, when Disney released Saludos Amigos and Three Caballeros in a two-movie DVD pack, 
which your yes. father <laughs> picked up. And then that's when I discovered the love you had for these movies, which has grown into this passionate standship. Yes. Yeah. So basically, I learned to love it because of you. Wow. <laughs> it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> well, what? I would have been like seven when I first saw that. Yeah. You, so I don't know. I mean, like, so, I don't think we really, like, talked about it until, like, that one Florida trip. Yeah, that was a with, very with the awesome trip. Yeah. <laughs> with, like, the, 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 the family. Yeah, the family. Um, and uh, it was, we were in this, like, really tacky, but also very, like, like, uh, what's the word? words i've written so much in the last 24 hours <laughs> i uh but it was like this really neat little house but all the walls were painted with like frozen murals and stuff yeah yeah it was it was kind of tacky but it but it was like homey yeah <laughs> it wasn't yeah. it wasn't like o over the top but it was kind of over the top <laughs> um but there was also like this like home home theater in the place mm -hmm. where we were white and I just commandeered the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> and we're was... like, we're watching Disney Plus and no one can interrupt us. Yeah, it was pretty fun, all things considered. Mm -hmm. That was where we just, we, we developed our queer head cannons for a few movies. <laughs> yeah, quite a few movies. Yeah. yeah. And then we also watched the Three Caballeros like, TV show that they yes. made. The Legend of the Three Couples. Yeah. <laughs> that shit that, was fire. <laughs> it, it was pretty good. It was surprisingly good. <laughs> yeah. Anyone who hasn't watched that, honestly, I give it a recommendation. Yeah, I, I give it a solid recommendation. Um, is it is it like the best? Probably not. But like, it's it's some good fun. I mean, we don't go to Bahia, so therefore it cancels yeah, itself so out. Yeah, so it's, it's it like, that downgrades it, you know, like by a ton. Yeah. But I mean, it is still like, you know, the three by kings so <laughs> yeah so if that's all you want then yeah go for it but um yeah that's it for me so i guess if you're ready we'll start diving into the sequences yeah all right so this whole section was actually the first original piece created for the movie uh, the previous sequences uh, involving the cold-blooded penguin and the flying gauchito were based on materials from the studio's first trip to South America in 1941. Uh, the closest genesis I could find was in Disney historian J.B. Kaufman's definitive book, South of the Border with Disney, where uh, he describes an early outline from September 1942. There, our boy, José Carioca, uh, the parrot ambassador of Brazil, would do as he does in the final film, where he would address us, the audience, on a stage, musing about the romance of Bahia, uh, <laughs> before being shut down by the pesky Araquan bird. And then together they'd take a train down there, and we'd later find Joe dancing a samba with a beautiful girl, only for her to be the Araquan in disguise. <laughs> would have been glorious. That, that would have been amazing to watch, actually. Yeah. Um, but then this whole outline was revised in December of 1943, just as Donald Duck entered the continuity. Uh, speaking of which, we enter on some muffled samba beats, smoke and green beams of light emanating from Donald's gift box. Uh, he peels himself out of those projector reels and heads over to check it out, pulls out the box, rips off the wrapping paper, and it covers this pop-up book titled Brazil. Because everything I ever need to know about Brazil comes in like a children's pop-up book type yep. thing. Yeah. Uh, and then he opens it up, spots his old pal Joe Carioca, strumming and playing his umbrella like a guitar and flute. Uh, he's also animated here by Fred Moore, who you may remember as the guy who, A, fell off a balcony at the Lake Norconian Hotel without spilling his drink. <laughs> Mm-hmm. A classic. Classic. <laughs> you have to classic. be in the know for that one. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> and B, 
he drew that mural of nude young women that it was installed in the locker room at the gym of the Studio Penthouse Club. Also, classic, not as cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gosh, if some of these people were just cool with drawing nude men, then I don't think I'd complain so much. Yeah, it's just like, I just want equal opportunity, you know? Exactly! Like, okay, yeah, yeah, nude women, but then, like, also nude men. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, double standards much? Exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah. But, but, well, actually, before I go on, do you have any any eulogies or sonnets or anything singing the praises of Joe Carioca? <laughs> Joe Carioca. <laughs> so... Uh, it's it's so funny to me to like you know go back to to this and it's just like I'm so used used to in my head calling him Jose that like mm-hmm. <laughs> coming back to watch this it's just like oh my god it's Joe Karaoke I'm like what what <laughs> who is that but then I yeah. see him and I'm like oh right they call him Joe in this yeah yeah um but other than that um honestly I just oh. I look at him and I see a man who has fun. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he may be a bird. He may be a cartoon bird, but he gets it. Mm-hmm. He can get it. <laughs> he can get it. Also, I just need to say, can we talk about the fact that he's literally lit in the bisexual lighting? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at I'm looking at it right now and I'm like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> this is literally bisexual lighting. <laughs> Disney. Disney. Girl. I didn't know you were chill like that. <laughs> I can tell you they were not chill like that. <laughs> they were not chill like that. I'm sorry to say. It's just the colors looked pretty. <laughs> yeah. That's why they did that. <laughs> Um, but that is that is that is in this. Yes, <laughs> and we love it. I love it so much. Um, now I'll save my spiel on his character creation for whenever I talk about Saludos Amigos. Yeah. Um, but just know that he's meant to be both this Brazilian ambassador and a carefree rascal who passes time by dancing, drinking, and hobnobbing above his station. And uh, believe me, that last part, it actually does have roots in Brazilian culture. Uh, Ah. Yeah. Uh, Even today, according to a writer for BitesizeBrazil.com, their view of success and social mobility involves making personal connections and wielding the ability to maneuver from one network to another. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Scholar Sergio Brock. Oh, God, fuck. (laughs) <laughs> I was doing so well you were doing so well it's okay let me try it, it again um, uh, Sergio Bra- Bra- fuck me <laughs> <laughs> B-U-A-R-Q-U-E <laughs> Burak Burak yes and, thank you or that might be I don't know that might be the, the European language coming in I don't know <laughs> I don't know man I don't know. I did, I don't want to be one of those people where it's like every time I say a foreign name, I immediately be like, "Sorry for imp- if I'm imp- mispronouncing that. I'm so sorry." Like that's the yeah. millennial way to do it. I'm tired of it. <laughs> yeah, it's like they're like, yeah. <laughs> you either get it right or you just like, yeah. Anyway, uh, this scholar, <laughs> he used the term cordial in his book Roots of Brazil to define this way of life. Um, Now, this is not to say that they are always kind or hospitable, but that they are often ruled by their hearts and emotions. And maybe that's why I feel if I lived there and uh, got in on the game, I'd be (laughs) moving up in the world a bit faster. (laughs) (laughs) You'd have more upwards mobility. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Uh, Because he was like, yeah, uh, in contrast with the U.S., it's like we're very much like individualistic and hardworking and Mm -hmm. all that stuff. But... um, all that to say that Jose is, by design, he's this lusty, self-indulgent parrot from Rio de Janeiro. And we love him for it. <laughs> we love him for it. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, now, he, as he and Donald get reacquainted, he asks if the duck's ever been to Bahia, to which Donald replies, no, he hasn't, like, at least seven times. Um, Stubbs yeah, he, does... he, like, <laughs> no, Joe ahead. asks him over and over again if he's been to Bahia, and just completely spaces every time when Donald says no, until the final time where it's like, no, then I feel sorry for you. <laughs> like... <laughs> Let me tell you about all the sweet action you're missing out on. <laughs> He's like, real quick, let me start this this beautiful animated sequence. <laughs> yeah. To yeah. show you what you're missing out on. But yeah. It, it also carries on to how, like, this duck, he, he never does any research without his buddies around to educate him, just like most North Americans. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> real. <laughs> real. Uh, anyway, as we said, Joe reveres by Ia. And as he begins to extol its beauty, a wild Araquan bird appears and even bounces out of the film reel, which I didn't know you could do. Yeah, he's how do, how how do you pronounce what he's saying? It's it's kind of a bop, but it's also kind of annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That it it does doesn't it sound like a bit like a TikTok jingle? It does. Honestly, yeah. I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of surprised that like it hasn't been used <laughs> yeah. as like an audio clip. Yeah, on TikTok, it it sounds like the kind of thing that would blow up. Yeah, but I don't know how many people are watching Three Caballeros these days. <laughs> Yeah, probably like no one. <laughs> except us! We're except, here! Except yeah! us! <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, the bird puts the reel back into place, but Joe's pissed. He like expresses his contempt for the bird before diving back into his eulogy. Uh, and we then enter this beautiful, stylized rendition of the city of Salvador to the tune of mm-hmm. Brazilian composer Ari Barroso's La Baixa do Sapatero, or Bahia, as adapted for English by lyricist Ray Gilbert. Uh, thoughts before I get into any further stuff? Um, I, I will hold off for now. Okay, then I'll just provide general context. Mm-hmm. So the song was actually written in reference to Shoemaker's Hollow, which was a street that divided two neighborhoods within Salvador. Uh, And then the Portuguese lyrics were, originally they were about unrequited love for a Baiana, or female resident of Bahia. And uh, this is relevant because, as in Saludos Amigos, a city like Rio de Janeiro at the time was uh, hailed for being contemporary, cosmopolitan, and therefore akin to North American cities. Uh, meanwhile, the draw of the draw draw the draw of Salvador was actually its colonial history, which was preserved through its buildings and architecture. So, in keeping with the Good Neighbor project, uh, the song was rewritten to be about the romantic nature of the city rather than a specific lover. Although I I did translate the original lyrics, and it just looks like he's pining for a brunette girl. <laughs> As you do. Yeah. Oh, my brunette girl. <laughs> yeah. But, the way it oh, kind well. of fits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My Becky with the good hair. <laughs> um, but I dare say that this revision was the more inspired choice because in the 40s, there were a lot of ballads, even North American ballads, that were about pining for everlasting love. Yeah, uh, it's kind they're... of a, it's kind of a, it's like an easy, you know, it, it's mm. like the easy thing to do. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, particularly during wartime, it's like a lot of yeah. men and women were like estranged from each other due to the draft and shit. Yeah, like it's it, it it makes sense within the 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 period, like the, the time period and the culture at the time, um, yeah. and so I yeah I I I can understand why the the choice was made to 
do a different song. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, like rewrite it. Mm-hmm. Um, but for example, there were songs like uh, Pesame Mucho, um, made popular by Mexican vocalist Andy Russell in 1944. Uh, we would actually hear him again in Make Mine Music performing the song Without You. Ah, okay. Yeah. And that song was not as memorable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, then there was uh, Jerome Kern's Long Ago and Far Away from the 1944 movie Cover Girl. And then there was uh, Frank Loser and Jewel Stein's I Don't Want to Walk Without You from 1941. Uh, and hell, we already had Destino. So <laughs> we did have Destino. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, by Armando Dominguez um, so yeah it was really really popular to yearn for your lover in the 40s mm-hmm. <laughs> and maybe that's why those songs resonate with my single ass anyway um, <laughs> yeah. also we have to give shout outs to Ken Anderson for his color design uh, and Josh Metter for his effects animation of water and drawing two pretty doves and shit yes they're doing the lord's work they are the, these doves <laughs> these doves do a lot of do a lot of work <laughs> yeah yeah but uh yeah that's all i had i was i was hoping that with your input we could we could rest in the moment a little bit more yeah um I mean, when it comes to, you know, just the the way that this sequence is, um, you know, I, I personally, I do not know a lot of the history. Um, I'm, I'm going to admit that. Um, however, like as someone who has never been to, um, Brazil or like really in South America, um, and someone seeing this sequence, you know, whenever I was really young. Um, even though, like, I didn't, like, really, like, understand, like, what was going on, because, again, I'm, like, (laughs) a baby, (laughs) (laughs) um, I remember getting this, like, immense sense of just beauty from Mm -hmm. watching this, um, and now as a person who, like, you know, has a little bit more (laughs) experience, um, it's, like, I, I would say that this, this sequence would probably be one of my, like, first, really, like, introductions into, um latin architecture and then also like latin like music um and like a more like subdued kind of like latin music where it's more like romantic and more um like i guess like not like beautiful and like you know other latin music is not beautiful i just mean it more of like it like makes you like like i really felt something whenever i was watching this when i was younger yeah the visceral reaction was very strong yeah, like, it, it, it really evokes, like, just this kind of, like, it, it evokes this yearning mm-hmm. within you, you know, to, like, want to go to Bahia, even though, yeah. like, if you've never heard of Bahia before, all of a sudden, yeah. oh, I want to go to Bahia, I understand yeah. the And, and the then need. you go there now. <laughs> yeah. And... Um, and then that's, like, not even, like, including, like, just the use of color um, in this sequence. Um, all of the like deep pinks, purples, the blues, um, and like in this combination, it just creates this like dreamlike feel, um, where like everything is like in the in this like hazy kind of pink, um, and then of course like there's like the the other like the more um, the more like normal colors you would expect are like kind of like in the background with like the architecture, which makes sense because you know. Latin architecture tends to be very colorful, um, mm-hmm. but like they're they're all like color graded to match this kind of like pastel dream feel, <laughs> mm-hmm. and it's like it it just it, it 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 makes you long to go to this dream where every everything is good, your life is complete, like. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, the sunset colors go so hard. <laughs> they do, and some of them are like blood red too. Yeah, and then oh and then of course the doves, the doves, they they do carry. <laughs> <laughs> the doves carry. <laughs> the doves carry in the back half, um, where they're you know flying 
and then they like meet in this like cathedral tower um Mm -hmm. kind of like in like a you know kind of like a mimicry of like you know meeting again and then like you know like a marriage but then they go um and then they fly together and then they end up in front of this lake um and we see the beautiful water effects with a leaf landing on the water yeah like a, a, a ripple and then the ripple transitions back into um a, a sea view of Bahia and it's yeah. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> it's just it's so beautiful and then like we're in the more like dark pink dark purples um and then like the black in like the foreground with like you know showing like the trees um yeah. it's just oh and then we fade to black and it's hold on <laughs> so hold on great. hold on I ain't, I ain't done yet I ain't done yet <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh gosh. I If there was ever a sequence in any Disney movie that made me go, "Uh!" Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it's this one. Is this one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I think I've definitely cried to Bayia before. <laughs> <laughs> Please take me there. <laughs> I want to go. Uh, also, what kind of boating is the uh, is that? Um, the sailboats. Yeah, yeah. The uh, one thing I didn't bother to research. <laughs> <laughs> that I don't know. It could just be like the just the, like there's like there's sailboats like. Oh, okay. I mean, I don't know if, uh, by, I mean, does Bahia, uh, are they, like, known for, like, fishing, maybe? I would say so, but it's, from what I gathered from J.B. Kaufman's book, it sounded like it was, it was a tourist destination because of its, like, historical preservation and stuff. Yeah. I am, I am reading up on this a little bit. <laughs> also, just to clarify, Bahia is a state, uh... <laughs> Mm-hmm, within Brazil is. and uh the the locales that we, we that we see in the movie are meant to be in uh, the city of Salvador so yes okay so i'm looking um so they were heavily involved in sugarcane production mm-hmm. um during the colonial and imperial periods periods so that also includes uh slave trading um mm-hmm. Later, the bay, the Bay of All Saints, was used um, as a whaling spot. Mm-hmm. Um, they they grew a lot of stuff, the usuals, cotton, coffee, tobacco, um, and then some other stuff. Cattle farming. Uh, they panned the rivers for uh, precious metals. Okay. Um, I would say, like, the most likely is that's the bay, where there's a lot of whale sightings there, because whales use that as a mating spot. Ah, perfect addition to the (laughs) ambiance. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Even the whales fuck there. (laughs) (laughs) I want that on their posters! (laughs) Even the whales fuck here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yes. Um. <laughs> okay, I think that was everything. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so after this sensual ode, uh, we fade back on the silhouette of Joe lit with pink and blue highlights mm-hmm. sighing with longing or the bisexual lighting as you indeed <laughs> yeah that's the one uh and then we abruptly just jump back into color uh yeah. as he collects himself <laughs> it's straight up just like a like a like a smash cut <laughs> in yeah. the color like <laughs> yeah it was weird um and then he proceeds to sing uh Dorvial Kami's 1941 hit have you been to Bahia he sings mainly of their foods, music, and dances. Uh, Which makes sense, because as I read, that was also one of their main, like, exports. Mm-hmm. They, they, got, they got those, uh, those nifty, nifty treats. There is the, uh, the vatapa, 
which is this paste made of bread, shrimp, coconut milk, ground peanuts, and palm oil. Mm. There's the karuru, which is this condiment made from okra, onion, shrimp, palm oil, and toasted nuts. And then finally, there's the, mung- the mugunza, which is a type of cornmeal with coconut. Huh. Learn something new every day. You learn something new. But then uh, Joe assumes drag to portray the female dancers in Tutti Frutti hats. Indeed. We love that. Um, and then he dons the Melandro costume. Now keep in mind, any time that we see a Melandro in this film, and I should have I should have thought about this before I put them on the Smasher Brawl list we did last year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we are looking at what were essentially the street smart gangsters of Brazil. Yes. Uh, but here, as with everything about South America, they are romanticized in service of making the country appeal to North Americans. Yeah. Yeah. I dare say they succeed. They, <laughs> yeah, I, they do. <laughs> I, d- I dare say. <laughs> they, I'd still they take all 25. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Okay, let's just say these specific actors portraying these. Yeah. <laughs> yes. These specific I think people. These specific people. <laughs> um but then after all this, Donald finally asks if Joe's ever been to Bahia. And the four of them respond no. Anyway, next sequence. <laughs> <laughs> next sequence. <laughs> next sequence. Um Luckily, the book turns its own pages to reveal this colorful little train en route to Bahia. Uh, The boys hitch a ride through the the jungles, whose flat, fluorescent hues were designed by none other than Miss Mary Blair. Uh, Now, in working with art supervisor Ken Anderson, she she had found someone who could feasibly retain her artistic style through imitation, as he just did with the Bahia scene. Mm -hmm. Um. But only through this minute and a half long sequence did she feel her own artwork and style was truly up there on the screen. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> In a 75 minute movie. <laughs> That's crazy. A minute and a half. <laughs> hey, I love that minute and a half, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that little uh, pandero and, and flute playing in the background. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. The funky little train is a is a fun little sequence, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I was just in it for the for the eroticism, so this train kind of like that was like the family <laughs> friendly little cock blocker in there or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the the centralism is really um, you know, blocked. Um just just in the in the middle. Yeah. Um cause, cause yeah, it's like it just it just suddenly stops. Yeah. <laughs> and but, then it starts uh, up again yeah. <laughs> after yeah. the train. <laughs> yeah. Uh speaking of which we then spot the Araquan bird getting into mischief by drawing different railway tracks, which in turn force the cars to split off into random directions. This fucker. Um <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I've ever liked him, you know? The Otakwa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't... I don't think I hate him. I don't think I, I, don't think I hate the Otakwa. But I also... I don't think I like the Otakwa either. No. Hmm. Would we, would we put him on the shit list that we made? If I saw the Otakwa, like... In real life, a cartoon Araquan right in front of me. Um, I think I would beat it up. <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you do that. Yeah. I, and I then think, he would he would probably yeah. draw like a little circle around you to make a pond of water and you'd fall right through. Yeah, and I'd fall right through, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I'd get up and I'd be super mad that like my head's steaming. <laughs> <laughs> or, or it'd be like, uh, how you... We were talking about Chicken Little, and then you were like, like, uh, how did you say it? It was something, but it's like you ended up, like, falling from the sky. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
good. Oh, oh, what was that? <laughs> it was like near the beginning of the episode. <laughs> it, it wasn't it like um. Did it have something to do with like moving like the plate or something to like make someone fall out of the sky? <laughs> like <laughs> something like that. <laughs> you were just like I think you were trying to like defend your opinion about it and you were like, Well, you know, I you just these these things happen, you know, and like you I might as well have just fallen from the sky or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I'll need to pull up the chicken little episode <laughs> later to remember what i said <laughs> uh well at any rate uh the train itself manages to catch up and reach the head of the line just as it comes to a halt upon reaching the station uh but to donald they've only made it to the station within the book but with mm-hmm. just one page turn he and jose find themselves on the street of Shao Sao salvador fuck <laughs> <laughs> now you're anyway. messing up the easy ones <laughs> <laughs> damn it um and then this female voice sings in the distance peddling her grandmother's coconut egg custards the boys hide behind a doorstep as kettle drums announce her presence as we know she is that bitch she owns the city she does she really she re- like everything in this city happens for her <laughs> yeah yeah uh, and then she arrives on the scene as a live-action woman, played by Aurora Miranda, sister of Brazilian entertainer Carmen Miranda. Uh, she actually performed a screen test in October of 1942, and was actually contracted as a member of the cast as early as December of that year. Now, throughout the song, she is very wide-eyed and all smiles. Uh, mm-hmm. And as far as I know, there are a few reasons why. First, unlike her sister Carmen, she was not very fluent in English, uh, mm. so she may have struggled on a few occasions to really get to what her English-speaking directors demanded of her. Um, though I think, for the most part, she got the actions down in a convincing way. Yeah. Uh, but the second reason is much more reasonable. <laughs> uh, so, as we see... This is the first time that we see live actors interact with cartoon characters in a Disney feature film Mm -hmm. Um, without the use of silhouettes, as in Fantasia, for instance. Um, Here, the animation of Donald and Jose was prepared in advance of the live action filming and rear projected on a translucent screen behind Aurora. Uh, The real issue behind this innovation was that the desired exposure demanded a reduced amount of light within the camera lens And it necessitated more physical lights on the set. Yeah. So this increased the room temperature dramatically, as it had done on sets of films like MGM's The Wizard of Oz. And we all know how that turned out. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Uh, So, yeah, not only did Aurora have a narrow field to perform in, being instructed to stay roughly six feet away from the screen at all times, um... But she and the other performers would also have to perform under these incredibly hot lights for a good three weeks between May and June of 1943. Oh, during the summer? Ugh. Yep. So her stiff performance may come from her discomfort under these conditions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but we never got to feel the heat like she did. Yeah. So. Honestly, I don't even care because she's beautiful either way. So she is. God damn. <laughs> like watching this, watching this sequence as a kid, it's like, oh, women are pretty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, maybe not you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, at some point, I might have been like, "Am I secretly a heterosexual? <laughs> are, you, are you secretly not gay?" <laughs> <laughs> but then that backed out of there pretty quick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> story of my life. Anyway. Uh, anyway, she flirts with Donald and Jose as she strolls through the town. But along the way, she attracts some human malandros or scoundrels. As we got to yes. keep in mind, they're like the tramps of Brazil. 
Yeah. Uh, naughty, naughty, naughty. And uh, she. But bursts. these ones are hot, so. They. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Guys, I. <laughs> we're gonna be harping on this for pretty much yeah, the rest like, of the movie, like. <laughs> like I, you just, you just have to understand if you have you not have seen this. <laughs> they're very hot. <laughs> for 1940s, even. Yeah. Uh, like they hold up. They did not get that expiration date. <laughs> and then, and then, like some of them are just like really talented. They're playing musical instruments. Like, how how am I not just immediately like, oh, they're attractive? <laughs> <laughs> uh, some of them were actually members of like a, like a, samba band. Oh, that's cool. So, so yeah, it checks out. Yeah. Um, but then she bursts into Ari Barroso's Os Quindins de Aya, which is a mm-hmm. fucking banger. It's a banger. <laughs> and I'm afraid I didn't get the lyrics translated, so as far as I know, she's just talking about how she's got them cookies. And she's like... I mean, she does. She's got them cookies. <laughs> Literally. But yeah. Uh, it's like a... Um, I imagine it's like a really cheeky suggestive version of um WAP or something. Yeah. Uh for for 1940s years. Yeah, for 1940s <laughs> years. <laughs> for a time when we couldn't see women's legs uh, like above the ankle or something. Yeah. <laughs> WAP but for delicate sensibilities. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, but upon reaching the square, we see a reversal of this hybrid process, where Aurora and the boys dance against an actual backdrop designed by Ken Anderson, whomst we stand, uh, except for Song of the South. Anyway. Except for that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the animation of Donald and Jose was projected afterwards so as to keep them in the foreground. Um. And all of these efforts were spearheaded by Disney's effects wizard and Mickey Mouse co-creator of iWorks. He's everywhere. <laughs> he is everywhere. Uh, yeah, he had actually left Disney in 1930, came back in the early 40s, and he was like, have I got some tricks up my sleeve, bitch? We're going to get to work. <laughs> and then they made this. <laughs> and then they made this. <laughs> Thanks, Ub. <laughs> Thanks, Ub. Um, now, as the song progresses, we see Donald get more and more jealous of these gangsters and street vendors for stealing Yaya away from him. I think he even gets green with envy at one point. He does, yes. Uh, he literally turns green and has horns brought out of his head. Yeah, devil horns. And then, uh, yeah, uh, Jose gives him a green mallet <laughs> to try He's and attack... A- the app like the is it apples? Yeah, I think it's apples. Like some kind of some kind of fruit vendor. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think it's supposed to be apples. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought so too. I'm glad we're on the same page. Yeah. Um <laughs> uh, but yeah, I didn't remember him being such an enabler. I know, but like I mean, Jose really is just like a he really is an enabler. <laughs> He's just that indulgent, yeah. He is. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this begins a recurring trend of Donald's libido overtaking his common sense and pursuing these nameless women who constantly provoke and tease him. Yes. And just to get it out of the way, uh, I completely understand how this can make people feel uncomfortable. (laughs) Yes. But for me, I mean... (laughs) don't know how seriously I can take it because I feel like the the filmmakers make make it clear enough that like he can only get so far <laughs> yeah you know I, like it I, is a Disney really, movie yeah it's a Disney movie and I do really feel like you know just part of the joke is how desperate Donald is <laughs> mm-hmm. rather than you know like the joke being like you know the women yeah. So I I think it's more centered on, you know, how ridiculous Donald is being rather than, you know, the women themselves. Yeah. It's always at his expense. Yeah, it's at his expense, not theirs. So mm-hmm. 
I, I, I think I can, I can forgive it a little bit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. But, um, it also really speaks to the social experiment that Disney was trying to pull off here in that Donald, as an American tourist, simply wants to consume this exotic culture and therefore lust after said women without making an effort to really understand or get to know them. Yeah. Uh, Jose kind of reinforces this by romanticizing Bahia, which we love, and indulging some of the duck's actions. But Donald really takes it to the extreme. Yeah. And I guess... I don't know. I, I feel like internally I can feel as desperate sometimes. But... <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, what's yeah, that? It's like it, it. It is something where it's like I can I can see where the discomfort would happen, um, and I can and and I'm not gonna you know say that like you know someone's not valid for feeling that way. Yeah. Um. It's just I don't I don't think it's really, I don't think it was meant to be that deep. <laughs> no. Like, I don't think this is on the level of, like, Hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's on the same level as what they did without Esmeralda. If I can't have her, <laughs> burn the streets of Paris to the ground. <laughs> and then also just the gross misunderstanding of Romani culture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, they're all like this? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh my god. Um but yeah, it, it I I feel like I might be getting to this point a bit too early, but just to keep in mind that uh these women will later be depicted as merely pairs of legs or faces within flowers. That is true. That is true. Uh, that does come later. Yeah. Uh but these images that homogenize the women and strip them of their individuality, their e- even their cultural individuality. That is true. Um, yeah. But I think Aurora makes it out fine. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, she... We'll get to it, but she literally has the power to, like, get, like, 50-plus men on her charisma train. And, like... <laughs> yeah. And she, she's always in control, I think. I mean, she literally makes the city dance for her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, like, I mean... (laughs) Are we going to get into a Destino tangent where it's like, they're literally (laughs) dancing for her, she turned into a bell. (laughs) Oh my god, he's coming. Oh no. Why is her head a baseball? (laughs) Why do those windows have eyes? (laughs) Um... But yeah, uh, for me, it's also a bit complicated because, as I've stated, I'm not totally opposed to that impulse. Um, You know, like, we often romanticize things like lovers or personal memories. um, But here, these cultures are being romanticized in ways that appeal primarily to North American men who were stripped of their wives during the war. Yeah. So, yeah, I I feel like the bigger point is, like... this is about a group of men who haven't been laid in a long while. <laughs> yeah. And if they were more open-minded, I could have helped. Anyway. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, keep in mind that Disney also does this kind of thing with every culture, even North American culture. They um, do. Yeah, which is where I think they've had the most difficulties in interrogating myth from reality. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Song of the South. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Pocahontas. <laughs> uh, um, uh, but yeah, it does take on a more suggestive bent here. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but uh, moving on, <laughs> the uh, the uh, the Melandro who gets turned down by Yaya is actually singer Alocio Oliviera, who sang Aquela. Aqu- Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Who sang Aquarela do Brasil <laughs> in Saludos Amigos. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> well, I just, yeah. I did, I, I'd never put a face to the name or the voice, yeah. and I'm happy to see him here. Uh, he's also I mean, nicknamed he's also Chewie hot, so. in the animation drafts. That's that's pretty funny, not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know why. Couldn't couldn't pull anything up. But he he is, he is also quite fine. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, I, be, I I'm not totally sure about this, but I believe Jose Oliveira, no relation to Alosio that I could uncover, um, is the guy playing the thin, almost pencil-like instrument with his teeth. Ah, yes. And he's actually the voice of Joe Carioca. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So like he and his animated alter ego. Are oh, in so, some okay. So that kind of explains why like it like lingers on him and probably uh, Jose, yeah. like near the end of that like sequence. Yeah. Also because he That's looks fun. like a fu- he looks like a fucking serial killer. With that <laughs> yeah. It's just it's it's just awkward because of like the like way that like he has to play the instrument. It just it, re- it like requires like you know like this like kind of manic smile. Yeah. With, with like only the f- the top teeth out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like it. It it's it it is like yeah. If you're not used to seeing like this kind of instrument, it can it it kind of it's a little unsettling at first. <laughs> yeah. Well, plus I'm like. Is it even really that loud? I mean, it is. A, it looks like it's a percussion instrument, and percussion instruments can be surprisingly loud. Yeah, but I mean, like, for it to be that thin, and like, I I can imagine it being louder during like a recording session because you got a mic yeah. on it. But like, if you're if you're just standing next to him, is it really that loud? I'm not sure. That I don't know. <laughs> I've never seen one of those in my life, so we'll never, yeah. we'll never know. I have only seen that instrument in this film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought you were a band kid. My God. Um, I was an orchestra kid. Oh. Excuse you. Uh, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Well, that's what... I'm, I'm a choir kid, so the things you, you play... To make the sounds come out, I don't know what the. <laughs> I I only know some band instruments. I know some of the per- percussion instruments, um, and that is not one that's used in you know normal. Uh, <laughs> that is not normal. <laughs> it normal midwestern uh, high school band. <laughs> Imagine though. <laughs> Imagine though. <laughs> one child to be afraid of at every performance <laughs> <laughs> the kid with the the instrument that looks like a pencil <laughs> yeah i don't know he he just gives me the wrong vibes i don't <laughs> <laughs> um <clears throat> but anyway uh chewy uh he comes back later on with bitches from the east side i guess <laughs> i guess I guess. And they're all very white. <laughs> they are. It's kind of... Hmm. <laughs> but, uh... uh, Yeah, and then they, in turn, take all of Aurora's men away from her. Indeed. Uh, even, even Joe heads off with the crowd. But uh, that just leaves Donald, who hands her this bouquet of flowers. And Aurora is deeply touched by the gesture. <laughs> <laughs> and pulls him in for a goddamn kiss. She's like, well, I've waited this long. <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course, this really sets him off as he begins to hallucinate percussion instruments. And this dance party ensues against a trippy rear projected backdrop. <laughs> yes. What is going on? <laughs> it It is a little, it's like, it, it's it's disco before disco and it's so weird. <laughs> I guess, and it's also like hallucinogens before hallucinogens. Yeah, but also it's like it could be real? Question <laughs> mark. Yeah, like I think the first test of LSD was documented in 1943, <laughs> but and it, and I it don't. Was done on Donald. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was like an actual doctor. Yeah. But uh, 
I don't I, I certainly don't think it was made public yet. Yeah. So like, how how do you do that? <laughs> it's just imagination. I suppose. <laughs> Cause yeah, this I'm, sequence is yeah. when we get to the, the cockfight. <laughs> Well, well, yeah, but a little bit. Uh, Aurora appears as the disco queen she is, uh, yes. confident as ever, and she takes on these two dance partners. And I'll let you have the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so she she dances with these two men um, who like kind of like she gets like kind of like passed between them, um, and this it's like it's like a pretty energetic dance, um, yeah, yeah. which I'm assuming it's like a like a cultural kind of dance um just based on the way that they're you know moving but at some point um one of the male dancers uh you know like spins her off screen and the two male dancers lock eyes and it's like the (laughs) they transform into cocks (laughs) they transform into giant rooster bird men Mm -hmm. and and they start they start fighting (laughs) like fully fighting um and, and and then they like morph back into men and it's like this like circling dance backlit with red and it looks very menacing. Yes, it does. <laughs> but also kind of sexual question mark. <laughs> yeah. Um Wait, what's the gay lighting again? The gay lighting? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These are well, legitimate cinema studies questions that I'm asking. <laughs> I don't, do you think do you think uh do you think scenes backlit with red <laughs> would be <Yeah>. would be gay? <laughs> is that is that your is that your two cents? <laughs> I I think I mean if it's like I think I think like with them like pacing around each other like they're literally like they're like kind of like doing this like like skip almost as skip they're like shuffle. going around like, like, a, like a skip shuffle kind of thing where like they're going around each other in circles like staring dead at each other yeah um, and it's backlit with red and so like they're in shadow while the like while it's like red in the background um yeah, yeah. and then there are points and... where like they make kicks and like symbol crashes yeah and, like they yeah. like do like kicks anytime they kick it like lights up like lightning flashing and like the symbols crash um, Yaya is watching with rapt attention, yeah. <laughs> as are uh, Jose and Donald on the sidelines with the rest of the people. Yeah. Um, Donald's getting really into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the buy energy so, is real. Yeah, it really is. Like he's like, he's like really interested in how this goes. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, this gets cut off uh, pretty abruptly. <laughs> Like they do, like one last kick, and then uh, Aurora looks down, and then is like, "Come on, boys!" And then they just leave. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then they take it to the streets, uh, leaving the men to, I guess, make out with each other. I guess I don't know. Yeah. Um, I mean, we don't really see them again. I don't think. <laughs> no, never again. So maybe they're still fighting. Maybe they're making out. Who knows? I don't know. But uh, you kind of lose focus because she uh, brings the entire town to life. <laughs> this is yeah. This is what I was mentioning earlier, where it's like she literally makes the town dance for her, yeah. just by waving her hands a little bit. The entire yeah. city, like buildings, start jamming. Yeah, they start <laughs> hip and hopping, they... hip and bopping. Yeah. And also, why do the buildings have eyes? <laughs> I. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> <laughs> why? Why does the pink building have like long, like, like why? Why? Why is the why is the pink house like looking at me sensually? <laughs> why has it got like lids that are like you know <laughs> lowered? <laughs> this just makes me uncomfortable because the last podcast I guessed on was on shoot the flick, and we were talking about the decom smart house. <laughs> and I know <laughs> we literally had to raise the point where it's like I can't fall in love with the Katie Seagal hat robot thing, and I can't fuck the house. So it's like, yeah, yeah. So flashbacks. I don't like it. Anyway, um, <laughs> but then uh, uh, 
Is there anything else? Uh, yeah, she just make. She even makes the moon dance. Yeah, the da- yeah the moon also dances for her. Yeah. Salvador Salvador may as well be renamed Yaya because it's her yeah city. it's it's her city. <laughs> yeah. It's her city now, bitch, and we're all just living in it. Uh, and uh, yeah, I guess uh, with a rousing chorus behind her, the book finally closes and plops to the ground, and we've reached the end of the sequence. Yep. So, uh, I guess final thoughts before we reach our question at the end. Um, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's a. I'm I'm inclined to like you know I I still I still love <laughs> the this entire sequence, um, mm-hmm. the whole Brazil sequence, um, because like you know again I watched it when I was very young and it's like and it and it it genuinely filled me with like you know just this oh. Brazil's kind of cool, actually. <laughs> and also, women are pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I I love, I also love, you know, just um, Jose, Jose, Joe. I love him. <laughs> He's an icon. A bicon, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it may be, it may be tailored, you know, it may be super romanticized, tailored to North American uh, citizens sensibilities, um, yeah, sensibilities. Um, but I personally found a desire to learn more about Brazil and like Latin American culture through this, and I find value in that. Yeah, that's totally valid. Oh. That feeling when you want to go to a place that never was. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, it's like, yeah, Bahia, going to Bahia would be cool, but like, this Bahia. <laughs> this Bahia. <laughs> this specific rendition of Bahia. I don't care if the if the houses make fuck me eyes. I want yeah. to go to that Bahia. <laughs> I want to go to this Salvador. <laughs> yeah, this Salvador. <laughs> On the usual street. (laughs) (laughs) (sighs) All right. Well, I guess now we can get into our final question. How do you think the Bahia sequence in Three Caballeros influenced the way the Walt Disney Studios produces films to this day? Well, I mean, uh, you can certainly see, like, the influence of it, you know, like, right after. Where, I mean, like you said, like, this is the first film where they combined live action with the 2D animation Mm -hmm. Um, and that technology followed the Disney company as well as other companies who you know wanted to create this kind of like hybrid film Um, and I don't (laughs) I mean Disney even after this um also like you mentioned where it's like they they like to romanticize certain parts of certain cultures um and make them seem really beautiful when really they're like there's like a gross misunderstanding somewhere yeah Yeah. (laughs) um and uh kind of like the 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 uh, how do I put this? Um, you ever have a thought and then like you want to verbalize it, but then like I have that you literally have, you every recording words. session. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like it's in my head. I'm, I want to say it, but like yeah, <laughs> it's not. Yeah. it's not happening. Um, like the diminishing of like women's role in mm. like the kind of like the cultural aspect. Uh, And just, like, a misunderstanding of what they actually, you know, do Mm -hmm. um, within a certain culture. Um, Like, for the sake of glamorizing it or something? Yeah, for for the sake of making it sexier or glamorizing it or, you know, making it seem more appealing. um, They'll, like, downgrade a woman's role or um, 
or like boil her down to just you know like the 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 easier to stomach things i guess i should say Mm -hmm. um because i don't remember there being anything about like oh we're experiencing economic (laughs) disrepair (laughs) yeah (laughs) anything like that it's a song about the revolution (laughs) (laughs) uh but yeah i think i think that that's my that's the main yeah kind of takeaway that i think yeah well i guess uh yeah the obvious answer is that you know as you said we don't need to project characters behind live actors anymore yeah uh we have better ways to do that we do we do (laughs) hell they could be they can even be added in in post-production these days yeah um but my personal answer is that though Disney would, as we already said, continue to mythologize and even homogenize <laughs> other cultures going forward. Indeed. The results were never this fun. <laughs> yeah. They they never reached this same level of oh bye. <laughs> yeah. Like I would love to get down with a guy in this specific Bahia. <laughs> In this specific way, yeah. Yeah. Like, the sunsets, the boat rides, the nightlife, the atmosphere. I ate all this up like breakfast. Yeah. (laughs) But in the end, you know, that's the rub. It's merely an illusion. Smoke and mirrors. (laughs) You know, just sobs. Yes. (laughs) Dove sobbing. (laughs) <laughs> but my heart still calls to you, Bahia. Call me back. <laughs> this specific Bahia. This specific Bahia. <laughs> I need. I need to. <laughs> no offense Direction. if you guys actually <laughs> live in Bahia, but like, <laughs> unless you're from this specific Bahia. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <sighs> oh. Well. I guess that concludes this chapter on Disney Real to Real. Wow. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> that was really good. Uh, Feels good to be back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, would you like to continue being like a recurring co host or would you like more breaks in between? Or? Um, let's see. I mean, my, uh, my summer is pretty clear and I'll be clear up until like. September ish, so I could be like more of a recur- recurring person again. Okay. Yeah. Epic. Um, I will say like I don't know if it would be right for me to keep you on for th- more three caballeros episodes because I I do know some actual like Mexican people or people yeah. with Mexican ancestry, so I probably want to have them yeah. talk about some other things. Yeah, have them have them actually talk about you know their culture and yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Don't keep me on just because I'm a super fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I figured, like, this is the best of both worlds. So, yeah. Yeah. I love Bahia. <laughs> <laughs> Bahia. <laughs> ah, but, yeah, I I have no idea what I'll be wanting to talk about next, but I'll surely let you know. Um, but I guess until then, you guys can reach out uh, via Diz Real to Real podcast on Instagram. Uh, any emails can be sent to real to real at gmail.com. I feel like I should probably give that up because it's been a, two years and I've only gotten one message. But... <laughs> I mean, it's, it's always good to it's always good to plug the socials. Yeah. Like, we want to hear from you guys. Gonna, you know? Yeah. You never know when someone's going to reach out. Yeah. Like, we did get a lovely uh, comment about uh, an episode on The Pirate that I did, like, two years ago. Yeah. Uh, they really appreciated that I took the time to interview Gene Kelly's third and final wife. It was very nice. Yeah. But, um, also, by the way, why does our Skeleton Dance episode have the most downloads of anything I've ever put Wait. out? <laughs> Wait, for real? <laughs> yes, it has, like, over 300. <laughs> that is so funny. Holy shit. I think people really wanted to hear about Skeleton Dance. <laughs> yeah, and then they turn it off as soon as I start talking about Reese Rideout, I'm sure. But like... 
<laughs> but like literally the next one, I think it's like either a Snow White or Cinderella episode. And it's up to like 68 listeners. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Glad you guys are finding something you enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> Must be a bunch of uh, Bywork stands. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of uh, Bywork stands. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, I guess uh, that's all the time we have. So, until next time. Oh, fuck, I should have written this up in Portuguese, but I, I guess we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll do it as normal. Have a magical day, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs> Do pensamento ai ai, faço meu lamento hoje na desesperança hoje de encontrar para esse mundo um amor que eu perdi. Olara, olere. Bahia, preciosa Bahia.